Hi, this is Omar at Top 5 E-Bikes, and this is a full review of the Utopia, a 30-pound carbon fiber e-bike that's also a smart e-bike. If you're interested in buying the Utopia, we do have an affiliate link in the description of this video, and if you click through our link when purchasing this e-bike, Top 5 E-Bikes will receive a small commission, which helps us continue making videos like this one. And if you're interested in e-bike content like reviews, please consider subscribing to our channel. We actually recently hit 1,000 subscribers, and we're super thankful to those who enjoy our videos and for those who have provided encouraging and helpful feedback, so thank you. In this video, we'll have three parts. The first one will be reviewing the specs. The second one will be talking about our experience riding the Utopia, And our last one will be our final thoughts about this innovative e-bike. So now let's talk about the specs of this e-bike. And I actually want to split this up in two parts. In the first one, we're going to talk about your traditional e-bike components like the battery, the motor, the chain. And then in the second one, we're going to talk about the cool features of the e-bike that you don't typically see on most of the e-bikes in the market today. So now let's talk about the components of this bike. It's a carbon fiber frame, carbon fiber seat post, and carbon fiber fork. And this is why it weighs 30 pounds. And that's actually including the battery, which is great. It currently costs $27.99. And that's with the delivery date of June of 2022. Depending on when you see this video, you might get in on, they've had a promotional price of $22.99, but I'm not sure if you'll, you'll be able to get that price. It comes in two frame sizes and three different colors. I'll start off with the brakes. It comes with hydraulic brakes. They're not a name brand, but they actually work really well, and it's super nice to have hydraulic brakes on any bike. The motor is a 250-watt, 35 newton meters of torque, so it's a pretty small motor, not much torque. Again, this is a city bike, or more what should be a city bike. The battery is a small battery. It's a 360 watt hour, um, but again, you don't have you don't have a throttle on this e-bike, so it's pedal assist only. Utopia does say that the range is 80 miles. I can say for sure, someone my size, there's no way I'd get 80 miles. But again, there's no um, throttle on this particular e-bike. This bike does come with a torque sensor. Most e-bikes that we've tested have had a cadence sensor. And I can say that the riding experience with a torque sensor is much different than with a cadence sensor, so it's not as jerky. So the riding experience as a whole is just much nicer with a with the torque sensor. And this is a belt drive e-bike. Don't forget about that. It comes with a Gates belt drive, which is top of the line. It's actually rated for around 18,000 miles. We've tested a few um, belt drive e-bikes. We love them. This is another one that was really nice to ride. All right, so now we've covered the motor, the battery, the brakes, so the main e-bike components. Now let's talk about the electronics and some of the gadgets that come with this e-bike. All right, now let's talk about some of the features that make this e-bike a smart e-bike. And I really think that it is just based on all the features and gadgets that you have. And it starts off with the smart hub, which is this LED display that not only shows you miles per hour and pedal assist, and we'll tell you a little bit more about what it does, but on the handlebars, you have a very simplistic design, and there's not much going on compared to some other e-bikes. You just have this button on the right, this button on the left. The button on the left is actually a directional pad, where if you go left to right, that's, those are blinkers. So there's a left blinker and a right blinker, which is super cool. Not many bikes come with a blinker. And then if you go up and down, it's the actual pedal assist level. Now where this e-bike is different is that you have voice control. So you can actually tell it, turn left, turn right, turn on, turn off, turn on the lights. Um, so that part of it, I think, is one of the really cool features. You can also, I mentioned that there's a fingerprint um, button, which is the one on the right, and you, you can actually use that to unlock the bike. And we had a few issues with it, but I also thought it was cool that you have this unlock um, functionality. And one other cool feature about this e-bike is that you can get over-the-air updates, meaning that they could overnight ping an update to the software and your bike could receive it. And then there's some new feature attached to this e-bike, much like, um, for example, a Tesla where they receive updates. And lastly, there's an integrated app with this particular e-bike. So there's not many companies out there, e-bike companies. The only one that I know of right now is Aventon where there's an app that's connected. But Utopia's app has a little bit more features than the Venton one, which I've used. Um, and you can see this here that it actually comes with a map and you can track and it tells you some additional stats about your writing. 
Overall, the Utopia has great specs for a city bike. It's a carbon fiber bike that weighs 30 pounds, and that's with the battery. It has a belt drive, hydraulic brakes, and a torque sensor for the pedal assist. Those features by themselves are great, but if you add all the great electronic features like an integrated app, voice command, blinkers, innovative design, and you have a super cool e-bike that I would agree should be called a smart e-bike. Now let's talk about our test rides. In my opinion, belt drive e-bikes are great and they're actually really fun to ride and the Utopia was no exception. Long term, you may have to deal with belt slipping, but I didn't have to deal with that since this is a fairly new e-bike. One other note is that this e-bike is geared for being a city bike, so it's not great for a hilly city. So if you're expecting the motor to do all the work, then this isn't the e-bike for you. Remember that this e-bike doesn't have a throttle, so the torque sensor for the pedal assist is all you have in terms of help. Speaking of the torque sensor, it was great pedaling this e-bike, and it's not jerky, which can happen with a cadence sensor, so I'm glad that they went with the torque sensor. I loved riding this e-bike at night because the lights are so bright, and I got to use the blinkers. I've never ridden an e-bike with the blinkers, so that was pretty cool for me. Um, and it and it made it to where it got me some attention, or at least the e-bike some attention, I should say. Um, it was nice that a few people, and this hasn't happened too much to me, but a few people actually stopped me and asked me questions about the e-bike. So it's not your traditional frame, so I think that's part of the reason why people are attracted to it. Um, not And it doesn't appear to be an e-bike is the other thing. So... I think when I spoke to people, they seemed to be entranced by the look and the features of this e-bike. So a couple performance notes on this e-bike. The top speed was around 20 miles per hour. So again, there's no throttle on this e-bike. There are three pedal assist levels. We didn't do a battery dream test, so I'm not sure how many miles you could get out of this. I only rode this um, a few times, and it was around 10 miles each time. So again, um, Utopia says that you should get around 80 miles. Um, I think it's probably around a third of that. But um, again, there is no throttle. So I imagine there are people that could get 40, 50 miles out of this battery. Sizing-wise, there are two frame sizes for the Utopia. There's a medium and a large. We rode the medium. I'm 5'11". It was perfect for my size. Um, I would say that unlike other city commuter e-bikes, sometimes the riding style because of the handlebars could be um, lead you to be really hunched over this one is not upright but it felt fine and you can see it in the videos where you know i'm not really hunching over too much i think one of the negatives is that there's because of the smart bar you actually wouldn't be able to add a, a stem adjuster which is something that we recommend for many e-bikes so now that we talked about the specs of the e-bike and we talked about our test rides Let's get into our final thoughts. In our final thoughts, I'm going to talk about the five things that I liked about this e-bike and then the five things that I didn't like. I'm going to start this one off a little bit different. I'm going to start talking about the things I didn't like, and then we'll get into the things that I liked. The first thing I didn't like was that there's no throttle. And I knew this about the e-bike. This is only pedal assist. Again, there's a torque sensor, which makes it really nice. Um, but most e-bikes today come with a throttle. This e-bike doesn't come with a throttle. So keep that in mind as you're looking at this e-bike. The second thing I didn't like is that there's no gears. Now again, it's a city bike that's not meant for hills. Um, having gears would be really nice, especially in this price point. The third thing is that there wasn't a kickstand on this bike, which is strange considering the price. And with the carbon fiber frame and such a nice bike, um, I always felt concerned that I was gonna scrape it or it would fall over. So I thought that, you know, probably should have come with the kickstand. I guess the other piece about the kickstand is there's nowhere to mount a kickstand, which a lot of bikes that don't come with a kickstand at least come with mounts on the frame for a kickstand. The fourth thing that I didn't like was the glitchy fingerprint unlock feature. I just had a lot of issues actually unlocking it. And I, this happens with my phone, for example, where sometimes my thumb um, isn't, the fingerprint isn't recognized by the device. Same thing here. So the C-Bike, um, you know, this is a really cool feature of the C-Bike but sometimes it wouldn't work and it would get you know, a little bit annoying. Thankfully, there's an app where you can um, turn on and off the bike through the app. The last thing I would say is a low top speed. So it's a top speed of 20 miles per hour. It seems like it go faster than that, but um, it's, you know, keep that in mind when you're looking at the seat bike that the top speed is gonna be 20 miles per hour. All right, now let's talk about the things that I liked, the five things that I liked. The first thing is a belt drive. So again, we've reviewed a few belt drive e-bikes, the top five e-bikes. The Utopia comes with a Gates carbon belt drive, or a Gates 
belt drive, which is top of the line belt drive. I love it. belt drive e-bikes. They're just so much fun, and you can feel the difference between a belt and a chain. So to me, that was the first thing that I really liked about this this e-bike. The second thing um, that I liked is the front light. So it's very innovative because there's a lot of e-bikes that have integrated lights. This is actually built into the handlebars, and it was a really cool design. It's very slick. It reminds me a lot of Apple in the sense that you could tell that they spent a lot of time from a design perspective, and they have probably some you know, very, um, some top designers. And the light is one of those things that first stood out to me when I first saw this bike. The third thing is there's just an innovative design about this e-bike. I mean, the frame itself looks different than any e-bike or bicycle that I've seen. And then you could see this kind of around the e-bike. Again, I just mentioned that the, the light, the front light was really cool. Also the backlight with the blinkers. So that was a really cool feature as well. And the frame. So um, really appreciate the innovative design and how they're trying to push the envelope with e-bikes. The fourth thing I really liked were the electronics. So there's so many features, and we talked about this in the specs piece of it, um, that it's one of the really cool things about the e-bike and what makes it different than most e-bikes on the market. Lastly, um, I would say the torque sensor with the pedal assist makes the riding experience so great. So if you've never ridden an e-bike with a torque sensor versus a cadence sensor, it's such a difference in terms of riding experience. And you could really tell on this e-bike, it was just so smooth to ride. So um, I really like that they put a torque sensor rather than a cadence sensor. So now that I talked about the things I didn't like and the things that I liked about this e-bike, let me close it out. This is such a cool e-bike because of the electronic features. Now some of these need some work, but I apply to Utopia because of their design and innovation in the e-bike space. We've ridden a few belt drive e-bikes like the Ride One Up Roadster and the KBO Hurricane, but in this price range, I can only think of one other e-bike that could compete, which is the V-Volt e-bikes, but those are mid-drives and they have an internal CBT. Um, so it's a little bit different, but the Utopia has all these cool electronic features which make it unique and different. So this e-bike really is for someone who likes new technology or gadgets and is a cyclist. It has a great riding experience I think it was a, an amazing e-bike, and I want to thank your Topia for lending, for lending us this e-bike and letting us ride it and review it. Let us know if you have any questions or comments about the Utopia or any other e-bike. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to Top 5 e-bikes.